All right, guys, a couple of different things for you today. Grafting a tomato onto a potato. So it's a tomato or pump, you know, whatever. Um, doing some hanging baskets with uh, tomatoes and chilies. And a quick look at the dry or soak the pea seeds, second, second time round. All right, guys, just before we get going, a little bit of uh, background history on the Tom Tato, or the Pomato, as it should be called, because Tom Tato is a registered trademark. Anyway, back in 2013, Thompson Morgan released the Tom Tato to the market. Seen by many as a gimmick, the tomato grafted onto a potato sold for a staggering £15 a plant, and that's 1775 at today's prices. Many purists claim that the yield from such an abomination would be low, when in reality the plant produced a similar weight of crop as the two individual plants would, albeit more numerous but smaller fruits. One research paper actually claimed that the starch content of the potato was less than a normal potato, but the sugars in the tomatoes were higher. They're a little bit harder to find now, but they're still selling for £10 plus online. Anyway, here's my attempt to uh, recreate one. Just looking at um, Terry King's heaviest pepper. Got a couple of those going. It's going to be time to pot them on. Let's get that away. And um, longest pepper, or longest chilli pepper. Doing pretty well. Cut, them, cut all the flowers off so only one ever grows. So let's get those out of the way. Get on with today. Right, today I'm grafting a tomato onto a potato. So it's either a tomato or a pomato. Got my clips ready, just in case. Right, um, I'm going to use Craigella. So I've got four of these and I don't really need a lot of them. So first off, gives me a bit of cling film for wrapping up with. This one's about the right size. Nice sharp Stanley knife. He says. I might do make a nice V cut in the end. And then with the potato, similar size stem. It's hard to do this with you. Here we are. Take the leaves off. A little bit deeper. Yeah. So I'm going to do very. Going to support that while I'm uh, binding it. Right, piece of cling film, or whatever you call it. It's exactly how we used to do the, the roses before I joined the navy. That's it. Don't need support anymore. Nice and tight. Right, I've got these two clips. Good 
and I'm going to support it. So the tomato is Craigella and the potato is Condor. In the greenhouse. I wonder, yeah, let's plant that up. Alright guys, time for my uh, second hanging basket. I thought I'd filmed the first one, but maybe I did, I don't know. So, 16 inch, I think it is. There's loads of holes in the bottom for drainage. And a koi liner. Coyer, coyer, whatever. God, it's getting leggy. Right, it's too big. So what we do, cut it in, into four, cool, tough, and just over, so it's one and quarters, and then you press it down, overlap the sides a little bit. Just for the overlap a little bit, look. Right, and now we put the compost in. And I got some proprietary tomato fertilizer. Basically chicken pellets and seaweed, I think it is. So we put a fair bit in, I think it needs a lot of feeding. And water saving gel. I had a heck of a trouble last year keeping the hanging baskets wet. So I'm not scared to use that this year. So one scoop of that. I know some people don't like it, but controversial perhaps. Okay then, start loading it up. And somewhere at the back here we have a basket of fire chili and that's going to go in the middle. Lovely. And like I say these are tumbler, not tumbling tom, tumbler. So they've got to go between the chains so they dangle over and this one's dangling already. Well past putting on time, really. Ooh. Needs a bit of support there. There we go. One. Second chain is there. Sorry. Um. Yeah, that will do that. And put that big one in, I suppose, here. Yeah. Why not, indeed? A play. There we are. Cool. Top it up. Well, not top it up, leave about an inch on top. Bit more of this feed on top. 
Because as you know, tomatoes are very, very hungry plants. And I'll, pop, I'll feed them with proper uh, liquid fertiliser once they start fruiting. <laughs> Number two hanging basket. And while we're outside, quick look at the peas. So a pea update, if you like. Not much in it. Soaked, dried. Poking up there, look. One there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, nothing in it. And don't forget, a lot of it all depends. I mean, the, these ones here could be lower down. Or even these ones here could be higher up. So they're, you know... Just wait and see till they all pop up. Yeah, the Nupla Ultra. The long, what, the eight foot long they're supposed to be. A little bit of a different story here. So, there's the dry, those three. There's only three showing ish. But the soaked ones, whole row there. So that one's been. Oh, God. Piece of purple sprouting broccoli. Anyway, there's one there anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, uh, we'll see. Let's wait till they start growing properly. All right, another pea update. <laughs> it's a second, there's a second sowing of peas, a second batch of two lots of peas, soaked and dried. Is there a difference? These are Hearst green shaft, dried ones. Soaked ones. I don't know. I'm getting the opinion it doesn't matter really. I say that's her screen shaft. Let me grab the Nupla Ultra. The only difference with these with the, than the first batch I did is these have been outside since sowing. Right then, yeah, these are the Nupla Ultra. Now here I am saying you can see a difference. Dried ones. Smaller. Less germination, but then again, some are still coming through, so... Soaked ones, nice and bushy. Does it matter? I don't know. I'm getting covered in green fly here. Right, and it started raining, as you can guess, so back indoors. <laughs> <laughs> 